Yo, what's going on? Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another competitive video. So NA has been included in the Queso Cup, which is a event run by Team Queso and Alvaro. Shoutouts to them that has been in Europe for three seasons now and its first season is finally in North America. It is a $5,000 grand prize. It is seven matches total. There are eight teams you play each team one time and then the four best teams move on to the playoffs and fight for the money. Now we are currently one and one in the cup. I'm going to be showing all the games on my YouTube channel from here on out. So expect some really good matches to be on the channel soon as we have a bunch of amazing ones coming up soon. But this match is going to be against the Dunga, which came third or fourth, I can't remember, in North America last year for absolutely goaded players on this roster. So let's hop into the games and let's show you guys what happened. Also, the games aren't going to be taken directly from my battle log. They're going to be taken from stream. So because of how the stream is kind of a tad stretch, it's going to look a little bit off, but it's going to be nothing totally unusual. So it should be perfectly fine. But just a little heads up before we get into it. So let's get into the matches, show you guys what's up. Okay, so here we go into the first map parallel plays now. With Byron being, you know, the strong brawler that isn't banned, we decided to go with a BB Byron strat. And what the strategy is basically is just I run up that right side and I get heals from OG, who's our team Byron. And I'm just going to try and control that zone. Now it's a lot easier to have the zone in the bottom left rather than holding that top right zone. Simply because it's way closer to your spawn, both teams basically get to a 50-50 tie before even going to that top right zone. So the fact that we have about half of it is a really good start. Now we went M's on defense. There are other better options definitely than M's, but we expected them with a Byron ban to maybe pull out something like a Mortis or with Byron, sorry, not ban, maybe to pull out like a Mortis or even the same strategy we have. So obviously we're able to get 50% on our lower um, area really easily. OG's doing a great job in the mid. Um, I got 26% of that top left area, um, un or sorry, the top right area. Unfortunately though, I can't really run up on the, uh, on the M's because I'm just going to feed super and there's nothing I can do. So instead I just decide to kill the Mr. P, take out their Porter, even though they do have another and, uh, basically start from scratch on the attack. Now I'm not too focused on that side because... I can't really get up there. It's an M. So I'm just going to be running towards this Mr. P trying to cause havoc, able to get a really easy kill. I'm going to try and use my bubble to get that kill. I'm going to take out these penguins, but there's basically nothing I can do. So I'm hoping OG gets some poke, Alec gets some, you know, pokes in and we can take over the zone. I'm going to hide in the grass, going to be able to get a shot off there. I'm going to go down, um, but I think it's okay because I did a lot of work while they're 2v1ing over there on that right side. OG doing a really good job, like one second more. And OG could have supered himself and Mali and stayed alive. But we only have to do 9%, so I'm kind of just running up here. Unfortunately, though, is Livy does come in the nick of time and clap me, so I only end up doing 1%. OG gets a really good super off that hits his Livy and heals Alec at the same time. Um, but at this point, you know, there's just not that much that they can do because they need to defend a BB with Byron heals that can just run into their spawn over and over. And at the same time, they also have to get 50% in 40 seconds. I don't even think they have the time to do it anymore. Um, but either way, we're playing defense. We're kind of just chilling. They're trying to win. But even if they stood on the zone for the rest of the game and we didn't get 1% more, we would win the match. So it really doesn't matter. Um, Mali's going to be able to get a kill on me. You know, they're running into the zone. They finally get position. OG gets a couple kills over there. Almost gets the third. Maybe he gets the third. I don't know. Um, but I'm just going to run up that right side. As you guys can see over there, we're going to get a really easy hot zone take. And that is going to be the one nothing lead for us after the first game. So going into the second game here, we decide to go with the same strategy um, with the defense and with the mid control. But this time we go with Mortis instead of BB. Um, with the BB, I just felt a, li a little bit limited. But with the Mortis, you know, it's not too hard. You basically got to bait out a few M's gadgets. And from there on, you're fine. Almost get the kill there. Unfortunately, though, uh, she did pop a gadget and get the kill when she was one shot. Um, but we did get about 7% or maybe like 4% up there on that right side. So it's not too bad to start off the game considering it is pretty hard to get percentage up there. Um, they obviously know I'm in this bush, so I'm kind of just walking around. But with Mali being one shot, I decide to go in. Is that he kind of wastes his gadget a little bit? I'm going to be able to pick up the kill over there. And now we're going to have full, complete dominance of that right side. Now, I think Alec fully finished the zone. I'm not sure. Mali's going to be one shot. I know Mali's somewhere in there. So unfortunately, he moves or he moves just to the left um, as I was going to go for the dash. So I'm not going to be able to get the kill, but we got over 25% of that zone. So again, another really good start by us. 
is Libby finds where I am. Again, going to use another gadget, but I'm going to be able to get a kill. Anytime that an M's uses a gadget and you're able to get a kill, it is a really good engagement for you. I'm kind of trapped over here, just trying to stall out as much time as possible. We're going to be able to capture that lower left zone. And again, before they're able to get even 1% on our zone, we're almost done with their zone. So not too much time left. Alex is going to get a kill. I'm going to kill his Livy as he's kind of easy to kill now that... Um, now that he doesn't have any knockbacks left. But either way, I'm going to be able to pick up a kill over there. Alex just chilling in that right zone. And that is going to be it for the hot zone set. It is going to be one to nothing for us in sets. So let's move on to the next one. So going into the next match, it's going to be Minecart Madness. So again, sorry that we don't get the very, 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 very beginning of the game. But that is because, you know, I'm taking this from a stream, not from my uh, battle log. Next time I'll do the battle log. Um, but this game, we decided to go with Mr. P. Um... Byron Lane and then 8-Bit mid. 8-Bit's just probably the strongest mid here without question. And with Sprout Band, Amber Band, Max Band, and um, the dog, I always forget the actual name, so I'm just going to call him the dog being banned. 8-Bit's definitely the strongest mid. Um, Mr. P is kind of a given. Mr. P is really strong, although I really don't like right side Mr. P. And it's also not a brawler that we use fairly often. A lot of the time when we play competitive, we actually ban Mr. P. So I'm kind of just thrown onto this bad side over here. Um, on a brawler that I don't really play against a fellow, you know, pretty good player. So um, not the greatest lane for me to take. I can, you know, safely say that Kennedy did beat me lane this game. But Alec and OG are doing a really fantastic job considering the matchup that they have. You know, Byron does counter Byron or sorry, VB does counter Byron, obviously, because of how much HP it has and how limited damage Byron can do. Um, Alec with a really good pinch is going to allow me to kill or win my lane. Sorry, he got the kill and he's going to make a really good play over there on Mali. And he's going to move forward now and we're going to have full position. Now it's 8 to 6, so it's really close. We just had this minecart though, so that's really huge. The rotations of the minecart on this map are so important. Because if they if the minecart's going to their spawn, that is them being forced to move back unless they want to go really, really, really aggressive. And obviously vice versa. When it comes to us, we have to move back. So you see how Mr. P... Byron are both just fully in their spawn because of the minecart, so they have to wait. This gives us two gem spawns. We're able to get this. Now, we do have to get another gem. Luckily, I am winning lane at this time. The one time I have been winning lane the entirety of this game um, was really opportunistic for us to be able to just walk up and pick, a pick up a bull. OG does a really good job as a distraction over there on that left side and actually does end up killing the BB, and that is going to be it for the first game. So going into the second game here, again, we have the same strategy. I wasn't really a fan of this right side, Mr. P, but I think I can manage. So I'm just chilling over here. Kennedy gets two hits right off the start. I get none, so he's already winning fairly easily. Um, is Livy is going to be the mid Byron. They switched up. I believe, no, never mind. They have the same comp. I guess they feel like they should won and just got kind of screwed over by the mine cards, which is totally fair. I mean, that does happen a lot to a lot of different teams. Uh, Gem is kind of the most RNG mode, I feel, nowadays along there um, with Siege. It used to be the most balanced, but I feel like Gem spawns, and especially the mine cart, add just a level of randomness and something that you can't control that most modes really don't have. Um, right here, I'm just trying to take out the Porter. I'm able to do it, but that does lead me to becoming one shot. So I'm just going to put my little crying Mr. P pin and just chill in that corner. Um, Alex doing a great job holding the mid and OG has been doing a really good job at just winning or not even winning, but just having his lane more or less. Um, I don't know if you guys saw over there, but I did hit a minecart. almost went down to it. Both my teammates are going to go down um, and they also have the bad minecart rotation now. So if you're ever going to get a team wipe on this map, it is a great time to get it when the minecart is going into your spawn. Because that's kind of, you know, just giving you free gems in a way. Because when the minecart comes back at us, we have to be passive. Now, Alec gets an absolute laser on his Livy. So his Livy's going to go down. And then OG and Alec are going to work really well together in order to get down Mali. So now we have control. We also are going to get a good minecart next. OG goes down, but that's after doing a ton of work. They have eight gems. We have six. So exactly like we were in last game. And they're going to be forced to move back because of the minecart. Like I said... It's a very interesting dynamic um, in a gem map because as you guys can see, we just got two free, absolutely free gem spawns simply because of the minecart. Now we have a choice to make here. We can either go really aggro and die or move back. Luckily, we got a good gem spawn. They should really be winning 9-8 right now, but instead we're winning 9-8 and they would have had countdown if instead of ha us having a good gem spawn, they got one. 
but that's just how it is unfortunately in this mode now they're going to get the minecart so this is our chance to move up uh we do get the kill on kennedy as he has to move back or be aggro he decides to go aggro he goes down which happens a lot when you go aggro um and yeah we're gonna have full control at this point i don't know if you guys can tell by how i'm explaining this but i'm not really the biggest fan of minecart being in competitive just because it does really screw with you again we got a good gem spawn if they got that gem spawn then they would be winning this game or they would have the tie and get that next gem and so on and so forth um and maybe even win the game but because of the minecart and gem spawns, we are going to take that one and move up two Owen maps and on to the next one. But yeah, on to the next game and away from minecarts, we decide to go with a double healer BB strategy. Now we've done this a couple times in scrims and um, I've kind of played this on ladder at like four in the morning. And that's where I found this comp where I just get healed and run forward as much as I can. Now, unfortunately for us, very, very unfortunately for us, they do have a counter. They have M's. But what we have found with this comp is you cannot beat this comp if you only have one counter. You need to have two tank counters in order to score the goal. So I was a little bit passive there. I probably should have just tried to walk it in, but I didn't. So the goal moving forward is just for me to pick up the ball, try and team wipe, try and do whatever, and just move forward. So I'm going to take a shot over there. I think I'm able to kill the Sandy. I am. Alec and OG are going to be able to get the kill. They're going to pass the ball forward. And with all the heals and the shield and them not even being alive... This is going to be a really easy first goal for us, so it's going to be one nothing. Now, I'm going to, again, go for the same strategy. I'm going to walk forward with my insane BB shield and just try and do something. Now, I get a bubble off, try and make a play there, because I really wasn't going anywhere with that, or with that M super. Um, unfortunately, not able to do it, though. OG and Alec are doing a really good job at just holding back. They know not to get too aggressive and not to die, because... There's no reason for them to get aggressive because they're the Poco and the Byron. I passed the ball to Alec. He's not able to make a play. Um, I don't even remember if he asked for it. I don't really know what's happening there. I'm able to get a hit. This is a really good spot to just get some bounces. So I get a couple bounces. I probably could have scored, but I really wanted to team wipe. So we're going to be able to pick up three kills. I'm going to do like a half spin kind of thing and put the ball in the net. And that is going to give us a one to nothing lead in Brawl Ball. Now moving on to the next game, we decide to go with the same comp. Uh, we're feeling kind of confident as we've won the last um, five games in Ron match points. So we're like, okay, we can kind of fool around. This is just a fun comp to run um, and try and do something. But unfortunately, they came prepared. They have the double counter here, and that is no fun. Really good pass over there by Alec. If I picked it up, if I wasn't on the lower tile, but instead the higher tile, we would have scored there. That was a really incredible pass. But unfortunately, I was not ready to be there, and I was slowed, so I couldn't go and grab that ball. Um, so here we're trying to make a play. I got to stay away from the Colette because the Colette will obviously just absolutely tear me to shreds. I try and get a bubble moving back and forth to just force them to go back a little bit. Not going to work out at all. Try and get some swings. OG gets a really good super over there and we're trying to make something happen. But every time I just go up halfway across the map, it's just over for me. They just kill me so fast um, and it is not very fun for me. Um, but either way, you know, OG and Alec are doing a really incredible job at holding control. Alec is able to get a kill over there. I try and make a play, not able to do so again. We do get a kill. Um, I pass the ball over there to Alec. Alec tries to get a goal. He's not going to be able to. He has his heal. He's going to use his heal on himself, which is fine. I get a pretty decent bubble off. Wish I had a little bit of a secondary bounce and came back, but it didn't. Um, and again, I'm trying to make a play here, but everywhere I go is just counter, counter, counter. Really nothing for me to do. I try and kill Kennedy here. I am able to get the kill, but even if I am able to get the kill, Mally's putting some really good pressure up on us. And I'm actually almost able to get the kill as I do get my bubble, but as Livy does get me with his last shot, if he didn't, I would have been able to make a pretty good save, but they're going to take the one to nothing lead um, deep into this game. Now, again, the counters are not very fun. We're able to get a knockback over there, which is really good. We're able to get some more bubble hits. Um, so looking kind of decent here, although Kennedy does get the kill when he is one shot, which is super unfortunate because I think if I would have gotten the kill there, we might have been able to score. Um, but OG's one shot, you know, I'm trying to just stop the goal. We're doing a really good job, all things considered, with this comp, but there's just nothing that we could do. We're trying to make a play here. Kennedy's going to miss it or kind of mess up his super over there. Alex trying to make something happen, but... There's just nothing we can do. We're trying to make a last second play here. 10 seconds left. Nine. Uh, we're on that left side. OG passes it to the middle. I'm going to pass it to Alec. I give him the ball. He tries to make a play. And he actually could have scored here. 
but he misses the net and hits the post and that is going to tie the series up at one to one now going into the final game here just want to show you guys that this would have been a gg but alec completely misses his super shot and hits the post this game goes to a tie when a game ties what's ha what happens is you're forced to do a rematch same brawlers same map same star power same gadget so let's hop into that game and i'll show you guys what happened in the next game so hopping into our final game here i think they thought on our third game we would finally switch up the comp but we decided to keep the comp the same they went Dinah kind of as a troll pick maybe they sensed um that they weren't gonna win so they just kind of wanted to troll um but nonetheless i respect the pick we're gonna try and score a goal there not gonna be able to get it we are really close to one here though everyone is basically one shot alex trying to make plays he's close to a super though not able to get it i'm just gonna try and walk forward here i believe and just score i go for it i get the ball passed back to me Luckily, I wasn't auto-aiming. I don't auto-aim with BB for whatever reason, and I actually was able to just pick a side right there that they weren't and get an easy goal. OG's going to go down. Is Livy's trying to make a play? Last second, Alex going to be able to get the kill. Alex going to pass me the ball, and I could have scored here, but in the tie game, I trick shot it on Kennedy, and I wanted to get another trick shot, um, so I went for it. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get it, so now it's kind of just, you know... Not looking like much of a competitive game at this point. You know, we're in each other's spawns, kind of trolling. Um, I'm able to get the kill on Mally. He's not going to be able to score. Almost got one on Kennedy. Not going to be able to. As Livy's going to jump away over that wall with Dynamite. Um, pretty funny game altogether. But um, we definitely have the alpha comp here. Because again, they only have one defense. And even that one defense is not as good as their Colette was last game. And they obviously have a... Dynamite, which is not really the best brawler um, for competitive. As Livy tries to make a play, he's going to kill Alec, but I'm just going to walk that ball in, and that is going to be it. We're going to win 3-0 against Dunga and take the W. But anyways, that is going to be the games today. So as everything currently stands, we are tied in second. We actually lost to Jigsaw in our second game because we were kind of trolling, you know, four Shelly picks, a couple Mortis picks. And you end up losing 3-2 to a pretty good team. So no more trolling for us for the rest of the season. I'm going to plan on making a video every single time we have a match. Again, the season is seven games long. Our next match is against a team called the Monkeys. It is going to be, I believe, today by the time the video is out. So I'm going to try and get that competitive video out by Friday or Saturday. But our next three matches are against Affilion, Tribe, and IX. We have three absolutely incredible matches coming up to end off the season and then obviously we're going to try and get all the playoff matches hopefully we win it so we have more content for you guys but that is going to be it for me today i hope you guys enjoyed and if you guys did leave a thumbs up as always thank you guys for watching and i will be back again hopefully soon peace